This video is sponsored by NordVPN. It's no secret that Jackie Chan's career is in a bit of a weird place. In 10 years, he started in 9 live action movies. With exceptions to The Foreigner, each movie sucks harder than the one before. It seems even Jackie cannot escape from the lazy purgatory of the 90s action stars. But is that true? Chinese Zodiac, released in 2012, was meant to be Jackie's last hurrah, his last attempt at complex fight scenes, his last try at death-defying stunts. Jackie was already 57, he knew his action career was wrapping up. If he wants to keep acting, Jackie would have to change. Indeed, after this film, Jackie no longer performs actions to the same level. Yet without these actions, Jackie remains relevant. He continues to star in high-budget Chinese productions, and his movies keep making money until they don't. What is going on? Well, I got curious. So I rewatched all 9 Jackie Chan star vehicles, trying to understand what he's thinking and what the viewing public thinks of him. In this two-part series, I'll explain my thoughts. We have a lot of movies to go through, so strap in. It's gonna be alright. One year after Chinese Zodiac, Jackie starred in Police Story 2013, a film most indicative of Jackie's new career direction. Jackie plays a police officer who finds himself in a diehard scenario. A nightclub has been taken over, locking him, his estranged daughter, and all the guests inside. Jackie must free a hostage while dealing with his family drama. The film is yet another gritty reboot directed by a relatively new director and it shows. Nearly all of the critical information in this film is conveyed through expositions. And in between these expositions, short flashbacks constantly interrupt the story momentum. Yet, with all the sitting and talking, the movie gives remarkably little information to the audience. Character backstories are saved as a plot twist, a revelation on how these characters are related. As a result, you spend most of the movie not knowing who the characters really are and not really caring. Added with the editing, it makes a very poor viewing experience for a film with an otherwise serviceable story. But that can be forgiven because Jackie shines in this movie. Arguably, he gives the best performance in the film, which is saying a lot because his co-star Liu Ye is usually an amazing actor. This psychological thriller with a lot of emotional undercurrents is not common in Jackie's acting career. From anger. To sadness. While not masterful, the underlying emotions are convincing enough even in close ups, and he single handedly made the climax of the film gripping and intense. When talking about this film on social media, Jackie sounded like he was excited not for the potential action, but for the role. And I think through this, we got a glimpse at Jackie's new goal to establish himself as a versatile actor. Jackie attempted more serious acting in Shinjuku Incident and in 1911, but nothing really stuck with the audience. So for this movie, he got a buzz cut, ready for a fresh start. What was a money-grabbing soft reboot became this poetic back-to-the-root moment for Jackie, a new way to prove himself. And I have to say, I can appreciate that. Speaking of Jackie Chan, do you know not all of his movies are available everywhere? Capturing footage for this video would have been a pain if not for NordVPN. Now I just need to pick my location and there you go, content unlock. It's super easy to use. But it does more than that. 
You can also unlock area-specific language options like subtitles. And if you are a diaspora like me, you know how much that helps. Use the link in the description and you can get a two-year plan with an exclusive deal. Plus, four bonus months free. One account supports up to six devices, it's affordable and flexible. And if you're unhappy, NordVPN has a 30-day money-back guarantee policy. It's entirely risk-free. So if you want to watch more Jackie Chan movies, and I promise there are some good ones coming, go and check out NordVPN right now. Believe it or not, Jackie's next few movies are all pretty decent. In 2015, we have Dragon Blade, a proper big-budget Chinese production with an established Hong Kong director at the helm. Jackie plays a stoic yet approachable Han Dynasty general. He meets an exiled Roman royal guard on a battlefield. The two befriend each other and team up to stop the invading Roman forces. It's actually a pretty fascinating setup, but you have to ignore a lot of historical inaccuracies to enjoy it. Jackie works as an action director in this film, and the quality is still top-notch. It also stars John Cusick and Adrian Brody, and they both kick some serious ass too. While the characters aren't the most interesting, therefore giving Jackie limited moments to act, whatever moments is there, Jackie delivers. Overall, the movie is pretty dull, but if you're a big history buff, it can be entertaining, either that or infuriating to watch. Sprinkle in some pretty decent fight scenes, and you'll have a perfectly average Chinese blockbuster. Next up, Skip Trace, released in 2016. This is a Hong Kong Chinese American co production, and like most American Jackie Chan movies, it's by the book and predictable, and I still somehow enjoy it. Jackie plays a cop who has to escort an important witness back to Hong Kong from Russia. It's a trek across Asia with numerous colorful locations and some pretty fun action sequences that actually utilize the environment like the good old days. Yeah, in terms of Jackie experimenting with different roles, this is not one of them. The film is essentially a combination of Rush Hour plus Shanghai Noon, but Jackie and Johnny Knoxville don't have a lot of chemistry together. On one hand, it's amazing to see Jackie Chan comedy again. The movie has some really funny jokes. Say something! Ming Ming Bye Bye What a Shame Guess who's the OG singer? On the other hand, it's all the same junk you have seen before. Except at every corner, the joke is worse. Go testicle. Demo some. It's a lesser rush hour. Whether that's good or bad, that's up to you. As for me, the one I really recommend is the next one. Also released in 2016, Railroad Tigers is, spoiler, Jackie's best film in the past 10 years. The director of Police Story 2013 struck back with a vengeance, seemingly found his footing. His more bombastic style fits this comedy so much better. Railroad Tigers is a World War II comedy about a band of railroad workers who secretly use their knowledge to fight the Japanese. But not in a protecting China is everyone's responsibility sort of way. These otherwise uneducated peasants have no grand ideals. They do it because they think it's the right thing to do, which is kind of neat. Jackie plays the leader of the rebel group. While he doesn't have any big character moments, the good stuffs are all in the details. His introduction is already full of character. Just the way he yells, that lack of patience without one extra word tells us that he has done this so many times, it's like a second job to him. When the mission is over, he sits with one arm on his knee and he starts singing. He's what Chinese people call a Da Lao Su, a salt of the earth man. And then when he needs help from someone, he hunches over and puts on this sheepish look. 
On the surface, it may seem like Jackie is just being himself in this film, like he's not really acting. But compare this character to the usual Jackie on screen persona, and you realize they are not the same. Jackie transformed for this movie. It's subtle but well done. But beyond Jackie Chan, this movie is also solid. The comedy, for example, isn't just good, but good with a purpose. My favorite example is how the film made Seppuku funny. I didn't know that's even possible. In our pop culture, imperialism is often depicted as highly organized and intimidating, and dare I say, very appealing, which backfires a lot. Often these iconographies appeal to insecure fascists and Nazis because they made them feel big and intimidating. A lot of modern filmmakers understood that. In Glorious Bastards, Jojo Rabbit, Black Klansman and The Producer all find Nazism by making light of the situation. These comedies point out the absurdity of the situation thus destroying the mythical aura surrounding the ideology, knocking it down from its pedestal. Intentional or not, Railroad Tigers does the same thing to imperialism. The main villain isn't a grotesque clown, so the film doesn't feel like a propaganda. But he's not invincible either. He's human, like everyone else. The only difference is that he's a murderous psychopath, and the film makes fun of that too. RogerEbert.com gave this movie a pretty harsh review, criticizing the film for its lack of action and its tonal inconsistency. Quote, Railroad Tigers doesn't have the finesse to pull up a more innocent riff on Inglorious Bastards. In other words, this movie got compared to a masterpiece, I count it as a high praise. It seems like people are expecting Jackie to keep doing his usual funny kung fu shtick, which may be why this movie was reviewed so badly. But this is not a Jackie Chan movie. It's merely a competent comedy featuring Jackie Chan as a regular actor. Set your expectations right, and it can be a very refreshing experience. In four movies, Jackie played three roles that is new to him. Before, Jackie's characters often feel the same. The cop from Project A feels the same as the cop from Police Story, which must well be the same cop from Rush Hour. But now, he's an estranged father, a Han Dynasty commander, and a rebel in World War II. He looks and acts differently in each role, arguably getting better and more natural with each performance. He can be convincing at times. It's good to know he's not in lazy purgatory. With a new direction and the drive to experiment and improve, Jackie's new career looks pretty bright. Right? Right? Why do I hear boss music? <laughs> 